Meow. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> it's just it's less stick. It's just the less stick. Yeah. Meow. What is it? Like a bull charge? Yeah. Like I think you just run yeah, into people. You just have to jump up and swing. Let's go back towards the camera. Yeah. You never know. You never. Hey. There you go. Meow. Mash. I guess it's just these two uh, boxes. What have I got? Ooh, close enough for health. One more. Well, it it pretty much no. <laughs> oh my god, you didn't double jump. No, I thought I was too brave. <laughs> it pretty much knows that there's um not a lot of magic going on at the beginning. I mm. suppose so. That's why you're getting a shitload of health upgrades. How long is this game? It feels like we've been playing it for like what, maybe two, three hours. Uh, it's long. It's a decent chunk. Yeah, compared to what? What's a really shit short campaign? All the Call of Duty campaigns? Well, I've not played a lot of the Call of Duty, so like people have to tell me about Call I think Call of Duty Ghost is not really looks... It's looked down upon that one. I heard uh, Infinite Warfare had a good one. Like the newest... After, the one before oh, you mean, you mean Kit Arrington? Yeah. We're gonna retake Earth! I've seen, like, I watched the cutscenes because, like, uh, a few, a few of my friends basically told me about it, and I was just like, "Yeah, I watch, I watch how silly this is." Kate Arnton has a pretty anticlimactic death in it. How does he die? He just kind of like. For those who have eyes to see, I, miss that? I offer the lightning of Zeus. Your girl. No, it's not. Yeah, it said the thingy's belly. It was a title. What did it say? It said the Pythian's belly. Oh, or the Python's belly, maybe. Python's I didn't. Python's belly. A Python's belly. I you made sure Mr. Red Chest. You sure it didn't say. It said the Python's belly. Well. Oh, we got a third one already. Dang. It. What does this one give you? Blue magic. Okay. Who cares? I want the I want the Poseidon experience ones always. It's the way to go. In every game that gives you an experience boost, I always pick the experience boost. Every single time without, you know, without penises or jibbity jab vaginas. You know what I might play tonight? Fallout 4? Whoa. I know. What's brought this upon? The fantasy. Play. What I just brought. Oh, you know what I should play and finish? The Last Guardian! Oh! Whoa! You and Frischcat just like, you just get Frischcat to play it. No! I'll watch it with you. No! You guys play. I'm playing it on my own because that's the way I played Ico. It's the way I played Shadow, which is my introduction to. Can I at least watch from the Tomb like That's like my favorite game of last year, which is really. It's between, between that or Doom. I think Doom just beats it for me. Oh shit! Doom was a good game. Doom was incredibly fun. Like 2016 Doom. Yeah, well, that's the original is still like the best. Of course, of course, of course, yeah. But this, the, the new Doom. Oh god, I hope they do a sequel to it because that was. Hey, that audience, was... don't you like me getting my ass kicked all the time? <laughs> do I hear me say Calliope in No, I don't. I'll build it right. up and then this it'll get the quiet. Thing. I say. think you're just using this this like thing that I'm doing to promote your burping. Yeah, I'm starting my own <laughs> channel called Bunty's Burps. <laughs> I might actually make a YouTube channel and put some videos on <laughs> and link it. Enough <laughs> said <Send us> link. <laughs> but right, go subscribe to Bunty's Burps. Bunty's Burps. Smash that like button. Every donation you give me, I'll do a personalised burp and I'll say your name. So here's here's my calliope. Let me do my practice. Nah, you're right. You're right. You didn't miss any. You have to, you have to actually do that. Are you sure you said the 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 Goliope. <laughs> oh my god, that sounded like Goliope. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> right, donate to my Patreon. Every single donation, I'll send you a personalised name. It'll be your ringtone, your text message. Oh. <laughs> that, imagine if you can make money from that. But someone probably does. Someone probably does. Someone probably fucking does. Someone's probably paid to smear out shit names on a wall for people. Who knows? This way. It's the world we live in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow.
Clicking, clicking L3. <laughs> Reminds me of Gears of War character. You have to go a long way back to get these two. Yeah, good though. Health upgrade! Like a tiny amount though, look at it. No, what do you mean a tiny amount? I needed it for my health. Oh shit, son, that's pretty good. Good thing you got it. <laughs> Calliope. A little sprint. I think it's probably faster to jog, but it's just funny doing that. Probably. Man, this guy must be amazing at cross-country jogging. Like, the amount he runs. Watch this, watch me fail. No, no, no you did it. I did it, you wow. Did it. This one I think has... you said this is like an Uncharted wannabe thing. Yeah. This is the unbridled thrill ride of climbing with no consequence. Fuck you. Except in Uncharted, everything would fall to pieces by now. It'd be like, whoa! And then it would be like a last minute escape. Yeah, that'd be a ridiculous set piece, number 29. Although they are quite fun. You know what would be really good? I hope they do this in The Last of Us 2. You have a climbing section that you have to navigate, but there are monsters, there were, uh, you know, the infected. The what they call quarterceps monsters, yeah. Clickers. Clickers, yeah, yeah. They're chasing you up, so they're climbing too, and it's mm. timed. That would be good. Because then it gives you incentive to climb faster as shit. And then they start climbing down as well, you're like, oh fuck, and you have to think you have to go left or right. That would be good, and they close in. Oh, wouldn't that be ace? Will they ever do it? No? Hire me, Neil Drunkman. I know what I'm doing. Please. Oh, I messed up. I got it. Whoa! <laughs> Sorry. I also burp because it makes you like, you go, oh, it makes me laugh. I enjoy doing it. I enjoy yeah, it. Is that the only reason? I enjoy making your laugh. You don't have out. any problems. I thought you fucked that up then. I really fucked that up. Yeah, I thought I fucked it up too. You know what? The feeling of fuck up a reason. Ooh! She's a bit acid. Smack it around. Fuck off. Hey you, hey you eggs. Get out of here. Little babbies. Little babby eggs. Cause he's stuck there, Jerry. Yeah, yeah, he kinda just floated over, don't he? Come on, get it. I'll do that, I'm gonna smash it. I'm slowly just destroying everything while it's grabbing me. Yep. He's smashing your way through. You know what this reminds me of? Eggs and stuff. Oh, demon dog! Oh, when you snap the next, it's the most satisfying thing in the world. Like, go... Maybe I can just kick him off the edge. Yeah. This is literally what I'm doing. I'm just grabbing. No! Oh, oh, motherfucker. That's something I can't stand. Animal cruelty. It really fucks me up. Even with a demon dog? No, this is make-believe, obviously. I mean... Watch this one put a cow in a blender though. You know. Pretty sick shit. I actually haven't seen that. I've seen a dead cow going though, like what a meat grinder is. A huge one. I didn't mean Did to you just do escape? That. Yeah, I didn't mean to do that. I might have missed some boxes. No. I was just hitting R1. Ah oh, well. And I guess there's a prompt to go over here with R1. Oh well, well we'll never know. Oops a daisies. I missed a red box, so, you know. Oh. I like how you, like, you're covering it like it's a card pin transaction. Like, oh, you, you went, you went so I'm trying to, uh, yeah, for anyone who, who's listening in, I cover the uh, tapping of buttons so the mic doesn't pick up an annoying, you know. Actually, that makes a lot of sense. I hope it's a button prompt. Oh, <laughs> almost! It was a button prompt. Yeah, you almost fucked it. I almost did. Oh, oh. I guess this is mummy. To that manticore! Is the manticore like a lion scorpion? Yeah, it's like a lion lizard who can fly. That's a, yeah, lion, yeah. that's a lion's head. It can breathe fire, obviously. My favourite manticore is in Adventure Time. In the first season. When it was good. I started watching that show ages ago. 
just a goofy little thing, really funny, really off, like kilter humour and stuff, and then, you know, kind of got pants, really quick. I didn't watch it. I, I remember, like, this is from Play 5. You introduced me to it, and I introduced it to you. You were kind of like, this is a kid's show. And I found it. I just found the first episode. You did? Yeah, because it was. I found the pilot, because it's Abraham Lincoln. And you, I you swear I showed it to a lot of people. Oh, maybe I didn't. Maybe I'm misremembering. But anyways, the point is we all watched it, and you didn't continue it. It's funny, because like I recall just watching it at his, and then like, unless you just didn't mention it to me. I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't matter, though, does it? I hate that. I hate not having clarity in memory. Because when you think you've done something and you're dead certain of it. Oh, you're going to talk about like ideas in Hollywood. And how Christopher Nolan stole all your ideas. Right, listen to this. This is fucking bullshit. Right? I made Inception. <laughs> I didn't really. I was into Stellar anyway. It's got the wrong fucking film. So, I went to university to study film. And, you know, I became a failure. So, I was successful. <laughs> <laughs> Education. Successful by the fact you got, like... You and most of your team got distinctions, right? Yeah. You got, like, uh, best grades? Well, yeah, we got firsts. So, um, that was fun. We got, we got like, high honours. And look at us now. Failures, all of us. <laughs> I think the best person out of the team we had... Can I jump over there? Um, ...was a teammate called Georgina, who was the producer, and she is a surfing instructor in New Zealand. She's fucking ace. She just was like, I want to teach surfing. She just went off and started teaching surfing. Oh, did she already surf to begin with? Yeah, she, every now and then, recreation. Recreationally? It's not a fucking drug line about. Uh, she used to do it every now and then. She used to surf, and she's like, I really love surfing, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go teach it in New Zealand. And then she went and she taught it. Oh, I have to hold on the... Uh... For a while. And then she started... Um, what else did she do? She does, she does something else now. Oh, shit, yeah, she started... Um, learning meditation and training to teach meditation essentially so now she just has a meditation class because this is really did you just freeze them oh is there the bugs the bugs freeze yeah the freezing bugs oh i see uh yeah so it's pretty cool anyways i was saying about film um back when i was in university uh before interstellar came out i think i was in my second year Maybe third year? Uh, and I had this idea for a sci-fi film where the Earth, I didn't really, it was just a really simple plot outline, simple synopsis. I said I had none of the details, it's just something I imagined from there. I thought that sounds really cool. I'd, I'd love to like, write that as a full treatment or a script or whatever. And it was for the idea that Earth was dying. Way in the future, Earth was dying. Uh, and they needed a mission to go find either resources or a new habitable planet. And the only way they could do it, and this is where it gets a bit iffy, my plot synopsis anyways, was they invented a technology where they made almost perfectly and atomically sound oh, have to do that. circle, which is impossible because every single circle has, a, has an edge that isn't perfectly circular. And if, like, you, you can't make something atomic, like perfectly atomically circular because, you know, atoms don't I can see still. why Christopher Nolan sort of decided it because you take it too long for you for, I'll just do it for him. Yeah, there's this fucking retard over here. And he, he, I met him. I met Christopher Nolan. He said, It's a good idea, Ben. It's a good idea. Do you mind if I take it? I was like, I was really. And they drugged me. They raped me. It's like. It's him idea, and Harvey Weinstein bullied me. My brother. <laughs> oh, it's your turn, by the way. Oh, cool. I guess you just have to do it or something. What? What? How do I. Oh, do I go in here? Cool. Uh, did I do it? What? <laughs> <laughs> I think you have to climb up here, actually. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, so they, they have a device that's a, almost a perfect circle, and because of it being circular, uh, atoms can be flung around it quicker. There's less... I don't know, I didn't know the science. I didn't have a fucking expert scientist on my, uh, you know, writing team. Can I break? Oh, shit. Uh, oh, shit. These dudes as well. Cool. Yeah, that's a pretty cool section. Anyways, that held them across the galaxy in a, in a, in a you know, spaceship. And essentially, it was a mixture between, like, serious... Tension like um, what's that submarine film by Wolfgang Peterson? You know the one. Das Boot. So it's like Das Boot, where it's like very claustrophobic. Everyone's worried about. And also a bit like Sunshine, the, the good part of Sunshine, where it's the ships fucking up. There's a lot of that, and then they meet alien races, and they realise that these races are intelligent, and it's just a struggle for survival in some cases because there are some pirates, marauders, all sorts. Fuck me, I'm gonna die. 
Right, uh, and that's in the film, say, fuck me, I'm gonna die. And eventually they get to a new planet, a habitable planet, and it's like, yay, we did it! Huzzah! And then the one character, the titular character, who has been very doubtful the entire time, because he left his family behind, Christopher Nolan, he left his daughter behind, stole that idea. Um, he doesn't want to go on the mission for a long time, but he's most suitable to do it. And then at the end of it, part one, he's the only person who wants to go back, because... Fuck me, that's close. Oh, so it takes its sweet time to crumble? That's kind of annoying. That's how the cookie crumbles. Oh, good Anyways, ones. Your story is so interesting. Continue. Oh god, now it's boring. It's nearly done now. <laughs> uh, and yeah, he goes back. So that's the end of film one. They finally reach their safe haven. And then film two is about him going back and telling people and then getting people off Earth, essentially. Fuck apparently that, that worked. Close. That worked, apparently. Okay, I'm not complaining. Uh, yeah. So it's just little things, and at the time, I was obsessed with um, the poet Dylan Thomas, and I was particularly obsessed with the poem uh, Don't Go Gently Into That Good Night, I think it's called, the one which Michael Caine repeats in Stella. And then about a year later after I made that treatment, that really shit synopsis of an idea, which isn't great, obviously, uh, all of a sudden there's a trailer that comes out with that poetry. The new film from Christopher Nolan, yeah, and, director of The Dark and Knight in the, Rises. And in the first trailer, he goes through, uh, they go through what seems to be something that's a circle, a spherical, um, you know, portal. They go around it, and I was like, what the fuck is this? And then Michael and Caine then, is talking about the uh, Yeah, he's doing the, the, he's doing the poem. He's, he's reciting the poem in the first trailer. And also, um, Matthew McConaughey is like, I don't want to leave you behind, Murph. And then, land on it, I get it. And cool. yeah, I was well fucked up. I was like, this, this, this cunt 